so now these are the first two LOS calculate and explain GDP okay though uh, the LOS says calculate uh, that's the job of a government of a country so you don't have to worry about this too much and uh, using the expenditure and income approach you should know what are these approaches and compare the sum of value added and value of final output methods for calculation of GDP that means there are different methods for calculation of the uh, GDP of a country and we'll see what, what it means okay so you can uh, now starting from this reading for the next three readings you need to make notes with me and you need to be really really fast with this and your studies are to be based entirely on these notes Schweizer should be or curriculum should be the reference uh, material so gross domestic product is the market value of all the final goods and services produced within a country during a certain time period all right so the most important word here is of course it is the total value of goods and services produced but produced within the country that's extremely important that means within the geographical limits of our country so if there is a foreigner or if there's a foreign company which has established a unit in Pune and they have earned some revenue or they have produced some goods those would be considered as a part of our GDP clear now there are two approaches the first one is income approach so GDP is calculated as total income earned by the households and the businesses in the country during a time period okay so from a very broad perspective the total of income earned by all the salaried employees and all the businesses collectively is what the economy has been able to produce during a year's time and the second one is expenditure approach that total amount of spent goods spent on goods and services during a period in the country is again your GDP so on a broader level what is being assumed here is that total income is equal to total expenditure now within expenditure we will have two different approaches the first one is sum of value added it might not be visible here sum of value added so what it means is GDP is calculated by summing the additions to the value created at each stage of production and distribution that means the raw material was worth 10 it was processed and converted into semi finished good which was worth 12 then the semi finished goods are being uh, packaged and made as a final product which is 15 and then product which is selling at 15 is being sold for 25 so what we will say is that some of the value added first we started with raw material of 10 and then we added value of 2 then we added value of 3 and then we added value of 10 so 10 plus 2 plus 3 15 plus 10 25 so some of the value added is here 25 as against we will have value of the final product we will simply say 25 which was again nothing but sum of the value added it is calculated by summing the values of all final goods and services produced during the period so let's move on now there are two different versions of it okay. so we have a nominal GDP and we have real GDP uh, on a broader level what you need to how do you need to interpret these words nominal and real nominal is something which would include the impact of increasing pricing that is your inflation as against real GDP would be something that would be 
doing away with the impact of inflation that means see now we are looking at the final prices of goods which have which were produced now it is quite possible that the price has increased only because of inflation not because your actual level of production has increased so we are looking at two different types of gdp here the first one is nominal values of goods and services at their current prices okay actual today's prices whereas real gdp would measure the current year output that means quantity of this year but prices of the base year that means these prices would not have the impact of inflation on them are we good now this is an uh, kind of an important concept gdp deflator it is the price index that can be used to convert a nominal gdp into a real gdp by removing the effects of changes in prices okay so let's look at uh, how this is to be calculated let us say that nominal gdp is being calculated as current price and quantity of goods produced then the real gdp is being calculated as base year's price into quantity of goods produced so this is your a and this is your b how will you calculate gdp deflator you would simply say a divided by b okay so we can do a, a simple example here let us say that current price of the goods is 10 okay this is a extremely hypothetical example because there would not be one price but let's say current price is 10 and quantity produced is 200 so your gdp is 2000 now current price is 10 but originally the price was only 5 price originally was only 5 and let us assume that current quantity this should say current quantity of goods produced okay so i should i should have written this wrong current quantity of goods produced is still 200 so b is 1000 now what we would say is that your deflator is 2000 divided by 1000 which is 2 so once you have once you have this deflator number which is 2 and if you have the nominal gdp you can simply divide this by 2 and get your real gdp is this clear so it's nothing but we are just undoing the effect of inflation right so if i also tell you that cumulative inflation has been 50% uh, throughout this period sorry i should say uh, 100% then this price that we have which is uh, 200% of the real gdp so you need to remove the half of it make it to 100% that means it would become 1000 of course the nominal would tell you current pricing but it would have inflation so when you want to gauge how well an economy has done in the particular year we will use real gdp okay though uh, in practice both of them are used uh, equivalently compare gdp versus national income versus personal income and personal disposable income so we have to go through a big flow chart here okay so this is your uh, gdp we are using the expenditure approach now that means how much this is expenditure approach uh, what was the total expenditure done on the final goods produced in your country now we would say that this gdp is equal to four factors c plus i plus g and plus net exports okay so understand this uh, carefully here that how do you calculate gdp of your country using this particular expenditure approach that whatever is the consumption of the goods that was done okay and whatever the goods were used for investment purpose okay whatever is the amount which was spent by the government and whatever is the goods which are not consumed by the uh, people in your country but consumed by the people outside which is your net exports exports minus imports 
total of all of them is the total value of goods and services that you produced in your country during the year right so if you have certain goods and services either those are consumed domestically or those are put into business investment which means those were capital goods or those are being spent by the government or those are being exported outside this is the total amount of goods and services produced now we are looking at the income approach okay income approach would be consumption okay that whatever income that an individual has earned either that would be used for consumption or that would be saved or that would be used paid to the government in the form of taxes expenditure approach was c plus i plus g plus x minus m okay whereas income approach c plus s plus t ha huh? cst okay so consumption saving and taxes now we need to look at certain other variables here okay the first variable is national income this is income received by all the factors of your production so let me use a different color here compensation given to the employees corporate and government profits before taxes non corporate business net income rent and indirect business tax subsidiaries that means the entire income is made of all these components of your economy who's been able to earn this income okay write it quickly so then we'll come to explanation of this it will be available yes so do you want me to go through faster yes gdp yes okay. so see basically what this income is telling you is that how much is the income earned by different participants of your economy so how much is the income earned by employees how much is the income earned by businesses so we have taken this before taxes that means anyways the tax income is being considered which we have taken a larger number here so we did not consider direct taxes that's why we are looking at only indirect taxes the income of government minus the subsidies so how much is the government earned through indirect taxes minus how much it is passed on in the form of subsidies net corporate business net income and then non corporate business net income that means proprietors partnerships non corporate business entities rent that people have earned and indirect taxes minus subsidies because we have taken profit before taxes here so anyways direct taxes are being considered in this particular factor okay and uh, one reason why i feel is it would have been relatively easy to uh, compute this way now capital consumption allowance would simply means depreciation on all the physical capital which has been infused in your business and statistical discrepancy is that when you actually start doing this calculations your gdp from income approach and expenditure approach will not match so in order to tally them you would be required to have a this would be called a statistical discrepancy it is kind of a balancing figure okay now see have we considered uh, the loss on depreciation here so when we calculate this we do not consider uh, depreciation and that's why it's called as gross domestic factor 
okay why the reason why we call this as gross uh, domestic production is gross means that it is not reduce the depreciation so that depreciation in uh, the economic language is called as capital consumption allowance no to f to find out gdp we don't need to do uh, anything separately see what uh, here is that these profits these profits have been derived after having reduced certain amount of depreciation right so then we would add back this particular number here so that it becomes a gross number and we would add back statistical discrepancy so that it matches with the expenditure approach okay so now we are looking at two important variables here personal income it is national income plus transfer payments made by the government okay so in our country it's uh, kind of not so prevalent or it is but a transfer payments would mean that government giving you uh, certain payments free of cost like in kuwait uh, if you are a kuwaiti citizen uh, you are given certain kuwaiti dinars uh, being a part of kuwaiti citizen okay so uh, i'll tell you the story once <laughs> we're done with this video okay so people if you are a kuwaiti citizen you get a certain amount by the uh, monarch of the kuwait just because you are a citizen of that country and you uh, accept his monarchy or you know keep him the king of your country uh, subsidies have been considered here so we won't consider them again a transfer payment would mean that you are giving it like for example we have this scheme uh, where if you are if you are below bpl then you might get of course we don't have a direct transfer payment scheme but if you are bpl you'll get certain employment okay so those kind those are scheme those are called as transfer payment schemes then corporate and indirect taxes because these taxes are not staying in the hands of individual we are looking at personal income of an individual so we are starting with national income we are adding the uh, amount which is given to him by the government free of cost then reducing the taxes because this is not available with the individual and undistributed corporate profits because again this is not available in the hands of an individual it's still remaining with a corporate so then the total of these is your personal income and out of this personal income how much can you really spend how much is the income that is spendable by you so then you'll have to pay taxes and only what is left can be spent so personal income minus personal taxes is your personal disposable income Should we move on? Yeah. 